Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Such a pleasure to have all of you here today, and we have three spectacular guests. I would like to introduce you to Dr. Ken Keyes from Vancouver, Canada. He's an ordained minister and uh, businessman. He has written a book on purpose, you know, helping others to find their purpose. And we have uh, Michael Paris from Tampa, Florida. He's an ordained Catholic priest for 44 years. And uh, I love his title, Loving on Purpose Life Coach. Woo! Fantab- fantabulous. And uh, he's written a book called Life Interrupted, etc. We'll give you the full titles um, above the podcast here. And Brian Bachon from Toronto. And he's a former priest turned executive turned... Um, what did you say, business founder? Oh, just founder. Just founder. Just founder. Okay, great. <laughs> awesome. So um, we, have, we are blessed with three holy men here today yes. to discuss spirituality in the workplace. And I want to start off with, I grew up in Insinger, Saskatchewan, a hamlet of 150 people. You know, very small community. Everybody knew everybody else. Uh, Ukrainian community, wonderful cabbage rolls and pierogies and borscht and all that, you know. And um, every morning at school, uh, it was one big school, eight classes of children, I think 40 of us in total. And uh, we would say the Lord's Prayer every morning. Mm. And then at the end of the day, we would sing God Save the Queen. So... And we were taught the Ten Commandments and, you know, do not kill, uh, you know, do not steal, do not tell lies, you know, the whole nonviolence thing and no sexual misconduct and so on. And then later in my spiritual practice, I I learned the Buddhist precepts. And uh, then I've been a a great student of um, other religions, you know, whether it's Buddhism or um, learning about the Jains and the Sikhs out of India or uh, Mohammed, may peace be upon him. You know, th- there is so much wealth in the world that you folks are in or come from. And But today I look at our world is becoming more violent, more people on Drugs, corporate America is more focused on sales and profits, materialism versus spirituality. This concerns me. We have wars erupting all over the place. You know, who wants this Ukraine-Russian war? You know, it's just the Sudan situation and so on. And then we we turn to, in the U.S., 13% of Americans are on antidepressants. It's like antidepressants fit into the medical model of mental illness and are prescribed heavily uh, in Canada. It, it's roughly the same and uh, high antidepressant use in countries like Germany, Spain, Italy. So my question to you, holy men, is what is going on? Why is this world erupting? What is causing the pain? If, you know, Um, why are we turning to profits instead of spirituality? What do you think? Anybody can start? Well, I'll jump in. So my approach is opposite a little bit. So I really believe, like my company name, Evolution Evolution, I believe humanity is evolving And I believe, yeah, there is a war energy that is still happening. You look at the invasion that happened from Russia to the Ukraine. However, one of the differences on that is look at the response of the global community. Look at the responses of individuals, very different than other times. It wasn't a passiveness. So there is a global conscious rising as well. And I really feel even in corporate America, corporate world, there's also a shift that's taking place. Look at the amount of people, the great resignation of people that decided to move in a different direction. Look at wellness programs, mindfulness programs that are going in. So I I firmly believe there is a conscious rising, but like any of us in our own personal growth, 
it's not always easy. Sometimes where there's light and goodness, there's also shadow exposed. And so I think that's what we're seeing in the world as well. But I actually feel there is a tipping point. Not everyone's on board, but I think we're at 51%. And just that tipping point over is helping move the world in a different way. So I really believe there's more of an awakening and an openness more now than ever. Mm. And, and I'll just uh, play with Brian's, <laughs> be the contrarian a little bit. And I think that's part of the discussion, right? To say like, what's going on. You know, I just finished doing a keynote presentation at a career development and, and you know, mental illness and identity politics and all these things that are going on. And part of the things Betsky, I believe, is missing is people are trying to get their identity from um, non-spiritual sources, you know, for what I'm due, you know, uh, where I'm at. And and I have a bias. And so, you know, as a, as a faith perspective, for me, you can't um, get your identity from, you know, external pieces. You have to get it internally from the spirit. And so when people are, when mental illness at the highest level, when suicide is at the highest level that's ever been, and people are confused because they don't actually know where to source this. And then they have confusion of what are the different options to be able to go to. So I'm pretty linear on the fact that you know, you need to figure out where you come from. And a lot of people are confused about that. They don't know who they are. They don't know the the spirit. You know, for me, that's, you know, my faith, my Christian faith, and that um, he loves us. And that's where that comes from, because that's pure. When we get humans involved, then we have the other side. And I do also believe that there is, you know, there is a lot of people are saying, as Brian has said, where we really want to have a, a positive contribution. But we also have to acknowledge that there is some evil that's out there. There's some tragedies that are occurring and happening. And if, if you deny that that's there, then you I mean, I think one of the things you even taught in your coaching with me, Betska, you know, we're polar, you know, you can't have high without low, you can't have good without evil, you can't have, uh, you know, uh, small without large, the, these kinds of things. So uh, I think the acknowledgement of that and also people are starting, as Brian is saying, to realize that what we're doing is not really working and that there is a shift occurring to say, you know what, I need to get back to those roots of spiritual groundedness. And that's where I get my identity. And then from there, that's where I can contribute. And therefore, that gives us hope, right? Mm. Absolutely. Michael, how about you? Where well, do you stand good. on all this? Yeah, I'd like to go even further back than everybody else. I just believe a, a, a large minority, if not majority, of the human population is stupid. Now you wow. may say, how dare you say they're stupid? Well, what's the root of stupid? We use the word pejoratively all the time, and we really shouldn't be, because stupid means we're in a stupor. And there are times when I'm just completely stupid. I'm in a stupor. And what causes the stupor that I'm in? It's kind of a, a place of being frozen in time and space. And it's really the result oftentimes of being bullied. And I believe that an awful lot of people in our world today, especially women, minor minorities, the poor, uh, are feeling bullied by an upper class or misogynistic kinds of attitudes. Uh, it could be so many different things. Just look at, as we can very easily see in Ukraine, as uh, Putin wants to bully an entire nation. Uh, when people feel bullied, they can either respond in a very positive way by fighting the bully, which is a wonderful example we see in Ukraine. Or if it's a small, uh, slow bullying process, very often we get into a stupor. We just kind of bury ourselves in what we want in this moment, what we need in this moment to feel better, to feel better about ourselves and to be able to blame somebody for the way we feel. And this is a very widespread uh, kind of thing that I've seen throughout life and th throughout my coaching. Uh, and so much of this results in very strong emotions like anger and fear. Uh, so many people have been abused as children the statistics for women being abused as children are astronomical. For men being abused as children are almost as bad. 
Uh, and then we have the abuse of people and in the workplace, the abuse of people in neighborhoods, in communities, uh, abusing people uh, in very many ways can uh, increase the stupor so that we feel, okay, we're just going to stand in place and freeze because we don't know what else to do. The opposite, in my opinion, of the stupor uh, or of the freezing in place is the attitude of entitlement. Because I think the people who are would not say they're in a stupor, many people are just feeling very entitled. I deserve whatever, fill in the blank, because I worked hard, because I have uh, the money to do it, because I don't think other people deserve it. I've worked harder than they have. That sort of thing of entitlement can be a, another very difficult rabbit hole to go down and never come out of. And that is a different kind of stupor, which allows people to just stay in place and think that everyone else is wrong somehow. And I'm just going to think I'm right all the time. Wow. Well, let's close episode one. And... Um... Can anybody hear 